All right, watch people, let's talk about the latest releases from AP. I'm gonna be holding this mic in my hand this time, so it might look a little bit weird, but it is what it is. I don't have a cord right now. So. So here we are again. AP has released a whole bunch of new watches, and quite frankly, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. I feel personally that it feels like every three months we get new watches from AP that they release. Like, I, I don't feel like there's any rhyme or reason. Like, they are working overtime there in designs and new ideas because they're just pummeling us with new watches and new designs back to back to back. Personally, I'm not crazy about that. You know, as much as I do like the watches that they just came out with, and I, you know, it's never really like one that's like completely horrible unless it's that music watch. You know how I feel about that. I think it sucks. But I don't understand why so many watches, but whatever. Let's get on to it. John Mayer. Yes, guys, the John Mayer. Okay. Royal Oak, white gold, perpetual calendar, 200 pieces, limited. Oh my God, I feel like everything is limited nowadays. And of course, with John Mayer's name in the back. Do I like the watch? I mean, how do you really hate a perpetual calendar? I don't think there's a single perpetual calendar out there that I could consider ugly in the Royal Oak lineup. They're all great looking watches, starting especially from the older versions, the vintage 39s and so on and so forth. Now, the whole John Mayer thing to me is cheesy. Yes, I don't care if they're collaborators. I don't care if he's a real collector. We know he's a real collector, okay? And personally, I, I don't care. When I think of John Mayer, I know he's a great artist and all that, but I just think of those weird goddamn faces he does when he's playing the guitar. It looks like he's jerking off. I don't know. It's fucking weird. Spectacular collector. I think he's got great watches, great taste. Great musician. Doesn't have to be introduced. He is what he is. What is the need for AP? This is supposed to be Audemars Piguet. They're not supposed to need anybody. I don't understand what is this constant need of having to do collaborations. Like, look, let me rewind this. Had AP of not hit us with 33 different models in the last 23 months, then maybe a John Mayer right now would be like, pow, wow but it's like redundantly overly done. Plus, I also feel that they're late to the game because everybody knows the Green Daytona as the John Mayer. I think had they have come out with that immediately and stamped out a John Mayer edition, maybe it would have come over a little bit easier. But I think at this late in the game, I don't know. I'm not crazy about it. I just think it's kind of cheesy at this point. However, beautiful watch. Some people don't like the dial, they've got that sparkly glittery effect it looks to me just like a blue frost i like it i think the watch is nice and it'll probably have no problem selling and of course because it has john mayer's name on it it's going to go to the freaking moon now end of rent on the john mayer edition do we love it yes hate that it's a john mayer so before i go on to the next watches go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and don't miss any more of the future content. Next, let's discuss the 41 millimeter sand gold tourbillon skeleton. Personally, I think it's cool. I mean, nothing wrong with trying to do new things. I also get a little bit of a Hublot vibe there, you know, when they're always trying to come up with a new tone of gold and, oh, this is the, the magic gold and this, I, I don't know. I like the idea, I think it's good. I think for some people, some people are gonna feel like it doesn't match with stuff. Personally, I don't care, which is why I'm wearing a yellow gold Cuban with a stainless steel no date. I don't care. Everything doesn't have to match so perfect for me. However, other people feel like things have to combine, like they have to match. I know plenty of clients that have to have a rose chain with a rose watch, with a rose ring and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I mean, unless they're gonna come out with sand gold accessories, looks like they'll be just wearing a watch if that's what you like. So again, I think it's still something cool. I think it's innovative and who can deny the look of that dial? Banger. Look, a lot of people realize 
only the Royal Oaks. All the blogs out there, what they blew out in your face was the Royal Oaks. Oh God, the new Royal Oak designs, you know? It's like guys sat there in front of a computer and just dragged, copy and paste the faces on other watches. Boom, print them, make the new watches. But not a lot of people noticed that they made a new Royal Oak Offshore 43 millimeter non-chrono. I mean, on one hand, you see pictures of a guy wearing it on the internet, it doesn't look bad. But then it's also like kind of weird. It's like a 43 millimeter diver, you know? It just, I don't know. I, I don't know really how to feel about it yet. It's blue, blue ceramic bezel. I mean, the watch looks in theory nice. I'm just not really sure how the 43 millimeter is gonna go on the wrist, considering that lately the watch trends are slimming down. I don't know. I'm not really quite sure how to feel yet about it, but it's something to definitely consider. Now, before we go back to the Royal Oaks, I wanna also talk about the new refresh of the Code 1159. The new Chrono variation looks a lot better. It looks way cleaner. They did something to that dial with the lines all the way around it, and now it kind of gives the effect under the glass that the watch has a bezel. You know what I mean? It looks like it has a bezel now with all the writing around it. Kind of gave the watch a little bit of a better look. I, for one, have never hated the look of the Code 1159, although the sales point to that they suck and the name sucks, which I've said it over and over. But I feel like this Code 1159 refresh was pretty nice. I like that. You see, this is something that they definitely needed. So for me, that's going to be a win. Now back to the Royal Oaks. The new yellow gold, 41 with the smoke dial. I think it's good that they adapted that dial in a couple more models because it's a great looking dial. You know, if you haven't seen one in person, this guy's jamming on that bike. If you haven't seen one in person, it really makes a difference. That smoking effect looks way better in person than it does on the pictures. So now there's a yellow gold chrono 41 which I think was necessary because a lot of people want yellow gold in AP. I feel like there's an overabundance of rose gold in that lineup and less in yellow. They also added a smaller version in frost for the ladies with that smoke dial in yellow, or perhaps maybe for some of the guys that, I don't know. So there's two more 41 flying tourbillons with some special dials. One is red. I mean, look, listen, I, I guess, whatever. We could have done without those. I think it's too much, too fast all the time. The last one I'm gonna point out is there's a new 37 millimeter flying tourbillon, ultra thin with some diamonds on the bezel, which of course, amazing, blue dial. I think it's also necessary so some of the ladies can also have some fun or some of you gents that I don't know, I guess have mini wrist and want a 37 millimeter, fine, we need that. That is the type of variety that I feel the lineup needs. But over redundant of dials and collaborations, not for me. But then again, there's not a single watch out of this lineup that I can say is ugly. You know, when that music watch came out, things fucking ugly. So that's it, that's all we got right now. We're gonna have to wait and see after watches and wonders what else comes out from the other brands. If you like this video, like and share it. Also, hit that subscribe button right now.